Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Ram Trucks. Pac-12 after dark on a Friday night in the desert, and two teams thirsting for a win. The two and four Washington Huskies come to Tucson looking to start turning their once promising season around. They face the winless Wildcats of Arizona. Two young head coaches seeking answers again tonight. Jimmy Lake of Washington, Jed Fish of Arizona. They have tried to block out all of the noise, and there's been quite a bit of it as wins have been elusive. Hi again, everybody. Clay Matvick alongside my partner Rocky Boyman. Tiffany Blackman will be joining us shortly. All right, let's look at Washington. A once promising season. Preseason top 20. Lose to Montana week one. They've been on their heels since. Still time to fix it, though. Still got to play Oregon. Still got to play Arizona State. Still got to play Washington State. So their schedule, the bulk of it is right in front of them. But let's face it, they got to start playing better football. Right now, they can't stop the run. They can't run the ball. And a quarterback who's way too inconsistent, tonight's an opportunity for him. Yeah, let's talk about him. Dylan Morris. There have been some ups. There have been some downs. You can try to be more up tonight. Absolutely. He's a guy, when you watch him, sometimes you, he'll make a throw and you go, wow, what a great throw he can make. And then he'll follow it up with just, just flat missing the guy and he's not been helped by his offensive line, been sacked 14 times, been hit a bunch. But the key tonight for Morris is taking care of the football. Right now he's eight interceptions on the season. That's got to change. Yeah, and just eight touchdown passes, so the ratio has not been great for Dylan Morris. Meanwhile, for Arizona, they've got quarterback concerns, too. Because of injuries, they're down to their last scholarship quarterback. His name is Will Plummer. And an opportunity for Will Plummer. Look, let's face it, no longer anybody looking over his shoulder. This is his offense. This is his team right now. He's had a full week of practice, a time for him to come out tonight and really run this offense. Same thing, though, got to take care of that football. And then for, for, for Arizona, the big guy is Stanley Berryhill, the wide receiver. He has double the catches of the next closest wide receiver. And the thing for him, Clay, the yards after the catch, Washington has got to find a way to tackle him and bring number one to the ground. Well, diehard Arizona fans are here tonight hoping this is the night the nation's longest losing streak comes to an end. 18 games has been long enough. Pac-12 after dark when we come back. Washington and Arizona ready to go here in Tucson. Before we kick it off, let's go down to Tiffany Blackman. We have some breaking news. Five Washington players did not travel for this game. On defense tonight, they will be without their leading tackler and linebacker at Afuan Ulofushio. Defensive back Cameron Williams and nose tackle Sam Taimani on offense. They'll be without their starting left tackle and Jackson Kirkland and running back Richard Newton. And guys, I'm being told that the reason is not COVID related. It's not disciplinary related, but that it is all injury related. Just another big blow for Washington. And as we talked about the problem stopping the run and now you're trying to come out tonight without your best defensive tackle and your best playmaking linebacker. It's going to be tough. And uh, Starting offensive tackle, that's not good. Arizona, meanwhile, a school record 18-game losing streak, longest in the country. The last win, October the 5th, 2019, at Colorado. 18 straight losses. 12 of those came under Kevin Sumlin, who got fired last year within hours of that blowout loss to Arizona State. But uh, this is a team that's trying to figure out how to win. They've got a lot of youngsters on this team, a lot of a lot of players on the roster, Rocky, who have never won a college football game. 56, right? That's a lot of guys still thirsting for that first victory. So Arizona won the toss. They deferred their option to the second half. Washington's going to receive the football. Luke Haversick has it on the tee. Giles Jackson is the deep man standing at the end line. And he'll come up. To the front of the end zone, hoping for a return. Not going to happen through the back of the end zone. And the Huskies will start at the 25-yard line. Dylan Morris, the second-year quarterback. Again, he has not looked comfortable most of the year. The first question Jimmy Lake took after the loss to UCLA, are you considering a change at quarterback? He quickly said no. He believes Morris still gives them the best chance to win. Yeah, because again, he, he does some good things out there. But for him, I, I really, I look at his body language. He's lacking confidence. I think the thing for him, the key early in this game, get him some confidence, get him some easy throws in the run game. If that can come on, that can really help out Morris as well.
So from the 25, they will begin by trying to go to the air. And Morris quickly to the outside is going to hit Jalen McMillan. That's a good start for an offense looking to find some rhythm. Christian Roland Wallace getting McMillan out of bounds. It's going to be a pickup of nine. McMillan, freshman, along with Roman Duzzi, another phenom freshman. Those two guys are really the playmakers. Dynamic ability. Also, would love to see the tight end, K. Dotton, get really involved in this offense early. Otten, number 87, usually in these short yardage situations, he is a target. They're going to run it here, though, for the first time with Kamari Pleasant, sixth year senior, and their leading rusher through six games. And this rushing offense, will it find a spark tonight? It desperately needs to. Yeah, and right now it's just it's, it's not happening for them. They're tied for second last in the Pac-12 in rush yards per game with 111. And the Arizona defense has had a hard time stopping the run. They'll stop Pleasant here after a five-yard pickup. Good carry on first down. For the six-year senior out of Rialto, California. Again, no Richard Newton in the Huskies' backfield, as Tiffany reported. So we'll see Sean McGrew, Pleasant, and probably Cameron Davis. And Pleasant, I think, gives them something, some weight, some ability, you know, 225 pounds of downhill running back. Jackson goes in motion. And they're going to give it to him on the fly sweep. Here goes Giles Jackson, and that's going to be close to a first down. It's going to depend on the spot. The Michigan transfer has some speed. You're going to see both of these offense rely on that here tonight. <laughs> a lot of jet sweeps from both teams. That was a good job both on the outside by Kate Otten and Jalen McMillan blocking, picking up the first down. It's been a difficult season for second-year offensive coordinator John Donovan. The fans have been... Pretty critical of the play calling, perhaps deservedly so. Donovan was the offensive coordinator at Vanderbilt and Penn State before spending four years in the NFL. But so far, moving it fairly well here, out close to midfield. They're going to give it to McGrew. Sean McGrew is going to be stacked up after maybe a yard pickup and then thrown down. There's that run defense, maybe standing tall for the first time tonight. Leevel Tatum. The nose tackle of Fresno State transfer making the stop. Yeah, Arizona, the strength of their defense is in their defensive line. They got some guys up there that will be without Keon Bars, one of their best defensive tackles. But let's go back to Dylan Morris. I think for him again, we talked about take care of the football, but the other thing is just hit the easy ones, right? To those guys when they're wide open, just hit them, get some confidence, get some momentum going. Second down and nine, opening series. Again, McGrew hit early. This time it's Jaden Young, the free safety, who was up on the run blitz. And now it's going to be third down and long. So there's Arizona defense under the veteran Don <laughs> Brown, who spent the last five years at Michigan, trying to get off the field here on third down. Dr. Blitz, right? Don Brown, he's doing a great job with this young unit. thing they're not getting is the takeaway. It's only five on the season, but they want to try to dial some up here tonight. Big third down opportunity for him. Who really thinks that this unit has some talent? They rank fifth in the Pac-12 in total defense, 372 yards allowed. Kate Otten might be a guy to look for here. From the 49 of Arizona, Morris in the pocket, finally sees the pocket collapse. It's a sack. Mo Diallo, the transfer from Central Michigan, gets in. It's a loss of seven and fourth down. And unfortunately, this is kind of the thing you see out of Dylan Morris, just not the poise in the pocket, right? Like at some point, the clock's going off in your head, and you got to either throw that ball or you got to tuck it and run. And he's just back there waiting, waiting, waiting. Boom, you got to take off. You got to do something. Just not feeling that pressure in the pocket real well right now and not scrambling either. And again, Jackson Kirkland, the, the left tackle, did not make the trip, so there's some shuffling around on that offensive line. That's the 15th time that he's been sacked this year. Now it's blocked. Punt is blocked, and Arizona's got it. Inside the 25, Reddy Short recovers it. It was blocked by Isaiah Taylor. And Clay, he was absolutely unblocked. And last week against Colorado, Arizona had a punt block. Well, now they return the favor. And you know what? It just comes right from no, no one blocks him. And that's the easiest punt block in the entire world. Great scheme that was drawn up there. But wow, what an impact play early for an Arizona team that desperately needs some big plays. Isaiah Taylor, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale. And now an offense 
with its third starting quarterback in three weeks. Will Plummer goes to work from inside the 25-yard line. Jalen John is the tailback. They will feed number 21. Second-year freshman out of Portland will get maybe a yard. So Will Plummer started week three. It was a loss to Northern Arizona after Gunnar Cruz struggled the first couple of weeks. But he threw two interceptions in that game. Jordan McLeod started the next two, but was lost for the season against UCLA. Cruz started again last week at Colorado, but he's out for the year now with an injured thumb. But here's the thing with Plummer. One of his best assets is his run ability. But I don't think you can run him because he's one of the only quarterbacks left. That's something to watch tonight. Second down and nine. Here is John again. Gets it to the 20, drops his helmet, and gets to the 19-yard line. There's been a lot of inconsistency with this offense, Rocky, especially inside the red zone. Yeah, absolutely. They move the ball well, Clay, between the 30s. They get down here, but the issue with that is they can't run the ball. The teams that do well in the red zone are the ones that can run the football, and right now that's not Arizona. Only five touchdowns in 20 trips now in the red zone as Jamari Joyner comes in and takes the snap as the Wildcat quarterback. He'll give it to Stevie Rocker. We're going to probably see a lot of number 10 taking the direct snap tonight. That's right. Joyner played some quarterback in high school. So we kind of got the indication he was going to get some Wildcat looks. Right there, unfortunately, not enough for the first down. So Arizona, like you said, they kind of dry up inside the red zone. They will attempt a field goal here. It'll be Tyler Loop. He was the putter last year. He has been handling the PATs and short field goals. This will be a 34-yard attempt. He's only kicked one other field goal this year. He was good from 28. And he puts Arizona on the board. Washington shorthanded tonight. Had a block punt on its opening series. Arizona turns it into three points. So what you got to come in here, your season's on the line, trying to make something happen. How about start off with a block punt and then get some points on the board. 3-0 Arizona. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN from Tucson. Just over nine minutes to go. Opening quarter, already 3-0 Arizona. And Dylan Morris, the starting quarterback for Washington, moments ago was helped to the medical tent. He, he took a shot on that opening series, bleeding from the nose. And by every indication, gauging by what we're seeing on the sideline, we're going to see Sam Heward here momentarily. So could the Sam Heward era be beginning tonight in Arizona? Well, Sam Heward, the biggest quarterback recruit ever to come to Washington, ranked number one as a pocket passer by ESPN in the 2021 class. Only the second career game here. He can play four, of course, without burning the red shirt. If you listen to a lot of Washington fans right now, they don't even care about no. that. They think that maybe <laughs> this is the guy right now. Right. They need to get their offense sparked. They need some momentum, need some energy, need somebody to come out and make some plays. And right now, Dylan Morris hasn't been getting it done. So let's go with the young freshman here. His dad, Damon, was a great quarterback at Washington, war number seven. His uncle, Brock, was a great quarterback at Washington, war number seven, was also a left-hander. And here we go with Damon Heward starting series number two. The freshman hands off to Sean McGrew. And he'll get to the 30 and pick up five. Well, obviously key for him to get a running game going to help him out. Here we go, now a second and manageable. Get him some easy throws early, get him into the flow here. He's a guy who showed up in spring, wasn't quite ready, but coach told us he's been making improvements from the second he got here. And now the young lefty out there gonna try to orchestrate this offense. Played one series against Arkansas State in week three. And he'll hand off again, McGrew. Leads the team and carries, is going to get it out to the 34-yard line. It's going to be third down and one. Sam Heward started four years at Kennedy Catholic near Seattle. Holds state records in a lot of categories, including over 13,000 career passing yards. They haven't seen him throw yet, but they pick up the first down with McGrew again on the ground. And 
This is good to see if you're a Washington fan. The ground game may be showing some signs of life. Got it out to midfield before that last series dried up and they had to punt, which was blocked. But that is the key tonight for Washington more than anything. Get the ground game going. There's no question about it. And last year, they did really good running the football. This year, it hasn't happened. The, big, the biggest thing they've been missing is the explosive runs. Only two runs over 20 yards this year. That's got to change. Rank 11th in the Pac-12, just 83 rushing yards last week against UCLA. McGrew again behind the right side and right guard for Ine Valu. That'll be a pickup of a couple. And, and I like this, Clay. You know, this offensive line has been maligned. They come into the season, a lot of hype, and hasn't really been going well. So, look, let's just line up and just go face-to-face -face and start mashing people and get that run game going. This could be a free, a free play for Washington. Heward is going to launch it down the sideline. It's going to sail out of bounds incomplete. That's the first time we have seen Heward throw the ball. He's got a big arm. He's got an accurate arm. Again, just inexperienced. Yeah. Defense offside number 90 in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty. Second out. That's Trayvon Mason, the starting defensive tackle. One of their better defenders, Steve Strimling. Our referee tonight. At some point, love to see Sam Heward get Roma Dunze involved. The other freshman, he's a big body, big catch radius on a Dunze, six foot three, 200 pounds. I want to try to find him early here. Dylan Morris on the sideline with a bloodied nose after the first series. Heward gives again to McGrew. He is stopped short of the line to gain by Jalen Harris, the team captain. He wears number one for Arizona, that uh, special number one jersey. So it'll be third down and short again. Sean McGrew, a six-year guy, been around a long time. But here we go. Now's the first opportunity for Sam Heward to try to find a way to get a first down and keep these chains moving. Been running the ball an awful light, a lot tonight, third and short. And solid on third down, 46%. McGrew took that snap. That did not look good as a flag flies in. Number 76, five-yard penalty, third down. That's a center, Luke Wattenberg. If your center's off rhythm, yeah, that's, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign at all. So now we move it back a little bit, and you know, probably a situation where you got to put the ball in the air. Wattenberg uh, had a shotgun snap sail over Dylan Morris's head last week for a 25-yard loss. It hasn't been a really good couple of weeks for the veteran center. So now what was a third and one, a third and six. Kamari Pleasant in the backfield to the left of Heward. Heward wanting to throw. The southpaw going to the air, down the line, has a man, and it's out of bounds. It was picked but out of bounds was Jackson Turner, the rover. And he had him play. McMillan had a step on the defensive back who was in man coverage. Just uh, would have taken a great thrown ball, but just sailed on him a little bit. And then the safety came over and made the play. And good job getting off the line. He beat, he's open right there, hit him. Just sailed a little bit on Sam. And you see that Turner couldn't keep that right foot in to make the interception. So, Race Porter, who had his last punt blocked, will come out. Stanley Berryhill, a dangerous return man for Arizona, is back standing at his own 10 yard line. Porter able to get this one off. And it's returnable here for Berryhill. Bounces off one tackler, gets to the near hash marks. And that's where he is tackled. It's a 47-yard punt, 8-yard return. Arizona with a 3-0 lead here in the first quarter. Gets it back when we come back to Tucson. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Ram Trucks. Motor Trends Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. And in part by the Peloton Tread. Run faster and get stronger like never before. Chris McAllister, Gronk, Nick Foles. All former Arizona Wildcats. <laughs> what do they have in common? They've all won Super Bowls. That's right. Some good players right there. Hey, Recent this is a, good players. Yeah. This is a great start for Arizona Rocky, a team that's on an 18-game losing streak, as we all know. They uh, have a 3-0 lead. 
They got shut out of Colorado last week, 34 to nothing. They hadn't scored in five quarters. They get a block punt, their first since 2018. They turn it into three points. That's some great momentum, and, and now the offense starting off pretty good. The key, no penalties for them. That's been a killer all year. And Jalen John got that carry. Quickly wrapped up by Cooper McDonald. This uh, defense for Washington under new coordinator Bob Gregory. With Jimmy Lake still very involved in the defense. And again, their best defensive player, Edifuan Ulafoshio, is out tonight. A couple of other defensive players are out. This is a Washington team that kind of limps into Tucson tonight. It really is, and, but stopping the run. Gave up 237 rush yards to UCLA last week, 242 against Oregon State. Michigan put 343 rush yards on them. Got to stop that run. Ball start. 74 offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. A false start. Just too many penalties this year for Arizona. It's going to be a big Saturday tomorrow. College football on the family of networks in the Big Ten. Of course, number two, Cincinnati. Uh, do they have any trouble with Navy tomorrow in your estimation? Look, those option teams are always a little tricky, but I think they, they handle Navy pretty well and probably stay at number two. Oregon at UCLA on ABC. Of course, college game day in L.A. tomorrow. Here's Plummer getting heated up from the backside. Somehow he was not sacked. And he'll slide close to the 20-yard line. I mean, he was getting heated up and somehow avoided the hit in the backfield from Brendan Radley-Hiles. And somehow Radley-Hiles just flat missed him. On a, he was, came scot-free. I mean, he's right there. I don't know if he was trying to go after the ball or what it was, but you, you get a free sack. That never happens. And when it does, you got to bring the quarterback to the ground. Still third and long, though. And you got to think that Jed Fish is holding his breath every time Will Plummer has Damn. to take off. He's not afraid to run. They just don't want him to. I mean, they don't have anybody behind him. Couple of walk-ons. Plummer, five-step drop. Again in trouble. This time he is sacked as Tupu Olafatui, the defensive end, gets in there for the sack. That's fourth down. ZTF had the Achilles injury six months ago. Has come back, played about 10 snaps last week, but he's just a flat gifted pass rusher. This is textbook. Got the hands, got the dip, and then you go sack the quarterback. Got those long levers, the legs, the arms. He is an absolute. Look at that hair, too. I mean, come on. That's what you want. You need something like that, Clay. Uh, he's <laughs> enjoying himself as this one is punted from the end zone from Kyle Ostendorp. It wasn't a great kick. It didn't come off his foot just right, but it takes a decent roll. Giles Jackson tries to get it back toward midfield. There's a penalty flag down now at the 45-yard line. Not sure if this is on the return or. Not sure the officials know at this point. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receivers number 21. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Timeout on the field. And Dominique Hampton with that penalty. So Washington down three on the road. Goes back to work on offense next. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Run it. Three nothing Arizona back here in Tucson. Dylan Morris ready to come back into the game for the Huskies. He's been attended to. It was a pretty uneventful one series for Sam Heward, the freshman. It was, and again, there was a nose issue. Had a bloody nose, went in the tent, got fixed up, and now he's back out here. Again, we talked about for Morris, the big thing, the eight interceptions, really been his downfall. Play fake, he's rolling out. Looking downfield. Cox's arm, fires, has a man, it's Bynum, and that's going to be pass interference. A collision in the secondary, Trayden Stooks, the freshman corner. Pass interference, defense number 20, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Bynum did a great job coming back for that ball to induce the penalty. That's exactly right. I mean, right there's man coverage on the outside, and I think the fact that the ball, it was a little bit of a double move, and I think the fact that maybe it was just a 
little bit underthrown actually helped bring that penalty about. It'll be a, another first down here for Washington. A lot of weapons for Dylan Morris. We talked about Terrell Bynum, Jalen McMillan, Roma Dunze, Kate Otten. A lot of playmakers out there for Washington. This is a part of the field that Washington's been at a couple of times midfield. They just haven't been very deep in Arizona territory yet. And now Morris is sacked by Jerry Roberts, who's getting the start at middle linebacker for Treshawn Hayward, who's missing for the second straight game. That is a loss of nine. Dr. Blitz draws up another one, Clay, and this is a beauty. A delayed blitz by the middle linebacker. You'll see him. Everybody starts to rush and then just kind of late. He's down now. Here he comes, and he's untouched. And right there is a quarterback. It's five wide. Everybody is declared. you got to know where that three rusher is coming from and anticipate what you're going to do with the football, and Dylan Morris did not. Don Brown wanted to see more big plays from his unit tonight. Only eight sacks on the year for Arizona coming into the game. They've got two already tonight. Now Morris again in trouble, and down he goes. Mo Diallo, that is the second time he's got to the quarterback. That's a loss of four. And Clay, it's a combination of the offensive line not protecting, but then just no poise, just happy feet in the pocket. I feel like at this point, he's He's seeing ghosts out there. Look, the feet are moving all around. Where do I go with the football? Now where do I escape? It's just things are not flowing well right now at all for Dylan Morris in this offense. Diallo, one of the 17 FBS transfers on this Arizona roster. Most of them are on the defensive side, including five in that starting lineup. Morris hit as he throws deep down the seam, and it's going to land incomplete. Fourth down as Jalen Harris blitzed in to put more heat on Morris as that was ugly from the start. And you can see why Dylan Morris doesn't have much confidence back in the pocket because he's always getting hit. It's been happening all year. We talked about the 14 sacks hit multiple times, and that affects the psyche of a quarterback. When every time you drop back, you're saying, here it comes, I'm going to get hit. And it's just not in good flow right now. The fact that you have your starting left tackle, Jackson Kirkland out, that doesn't help. It's just a bevy of problems right now for Washington's offense. Race Porter to punt, had his first one blocked. Sixth year senior, ranks eighth in the country, 48 yards per punt. Fair catch, Barry Hill. Well, Saturday night football, a Big Ten battle in Bloomington. Heisman hopeful quarterback C.J. Stroud and running back Travion Henderson leading the number five Buckeyes against Indiana. Memorial Stadium should be loud as the Hoosiers try to pull the upset. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC. Stroud and Henderson both making a Heisman case really rocky. Yeah. Buckeyes, of course, coming off by, and that offense has been clicking. It's clicking. They put up 66 on Maryland. They're scoring 48 and a half points per game. That's second in the nation. Don't look now. Buckeyes are rolling. Plummer off the pay play fake is hit and nearly intercepted. It was broken up in the secondary by Kyler Gordon. There's a flag in the secondary as well, and it came in late. I mean, Plummer hasn't had a lot of time to operate no. back there either. Ineligible receiver downfield, number 77 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Jordan Morgan, the left tackle. Jed Fish. 45-year-old first-year head coach, still looking for his first win at Arizona. Spent 20 years as a college and NFL assistant. He was the Patriots quarterback coach last year. Says the team is in good spirits. They're looking at the second half of the season kind of as a new beginning. Yeah, he said, look, our effort's good. That's not an issue. They just need their shots to fall, right? they got to make some of those layups out there. There's one. Plummer finds Barry Hill. You talked about the yak yards. Yards after catch, <laughs> and he gets six there after the catch. He's a slippery guy. It's just a knack. Some of those wide receivers have. He's not the biggest guy in the world, 5'11", 190, but just has a real gift for breaking tackles. And, and again, he, he's what makes their offense go. They're going to get him the ball 15, 20 times a night in, in a variety of ways. Jet sweeps, quick passes. He might even throw a pass. You never know. Barry Hill's the playmaker. First completion for Will Plummer tonight. Plummer away from center. And he'll hand off to Jalen John. Second year freshman. They really like how he's running lately. 
And he gets it across the 25 yard line to the 27 man down. For the Washington Huskies. And, and Jalen John is really starting to come. You know this is a complicated offense right. It's a pro style scheme but Jalen John I think is he's a bigger back. I think that's more kind of fits this style of offense that they want. He's 220 pounds and now he's starting to get it. John uh, had the best game of his young career at Colorado 11 carries for 71 yards. Trying to figure out who it is down there. It's Alex Cook. Safety out of Sacramento. And again there are a lot of injuries on this Washington defense Cameron Williams a safety did not make the trip. Cook is a safety so they can't afford to lose him. And, and this is a defense that, that has struggled all year. Biggest thing they've struggled with and we'll get into this is, is the gap integrity. You know they play a single gap defense. You've got to have a guy in every single gap. If you ask me it's the absolute most important thing a must have for a defense and they haven't been getting that and now you got guys that are injured other guys are now trying to play it, it makes it tough. This is obviously fairly serious as four or five people down there attending to him and you can see that the Washington defense has taken a knee. Alex Cook Junior. Safety out of Sacramento and they're bringing mm, out the man. stretcher and that's always a bad sign. It's just been a. Bad bad year luck wise for this Washington Huskies team. One thing after another. Yeah. We're going to try to get Cook. Onto that stretcher safely. And here comes the card. And it's been a little bit of good news and then more bad news. You know they get. Two ball of a two -y back right, tonight right. Uh, you know really getting healthier. And playing. A part in this defense again but now. You've got. Ila Foschio out and, and now potentially Alex Cook with an injury here. Yeah, Sam Taimani is out. I mean it's just sometimes it goes from bad to worse in a season like this. And that's one thing Jimmy Lake told us this week. He said you know the season of what, kind of what's been going on for him. It's kind of what football teaches you right it's tough man things just don't go your way sometimes you can try to do everything right and it still just doesn't happen they just got to try to find a way to salvage things and get back going won the Pac 12 North last year had 18 starters coming back there were college football playoff aspirations and they lost to FCS Montana right away in week one that kind of blew that out of the water now they've lost two straight to Oregon State and UCLA. They've been able to get Cook onto the stretcher. And you can see the concerned teammates. You know, we've seen a lot of football this year, Rocky. We haven't fortunately seen this yeah. kind of thing yet this year. And we've seen a lot less of it in the last several years because of, you know, the the emphasis that they put on trying to uh, minimize head and neck injuries in college football especially with the targeting calls not exactly sure what happened to Alex Cook but they're trying to stabilize him they're going to try and get him up on that stretcher that you see to the left of the paramedics and then get him off the field and get him some attention. And. Looks like it may have been a, a knee to the head as he's as John was running that football. I think that's what what did it. 
You know, but you're right. I, I think the emphasis over, I mean, it's been a good decade. Really, there's been the emphasis on the targeting. I think it's done a very well and kind of helping at least eliminate a lot of these kind of situations. But it, unfortunately, it's a you know, game of football. It's, you know, it's just tough to legislate violence like this. It really is. Alec Cook, junior safety out of Sacramento, California, is the injured Washington Husky player. Again, another position they're just not deep at right now with Cameron Williams out. You can see the concern, too, on the Arizona Wildcats players. Let's hope, let's just hope and pray that this is nothing serious and Alex Cook will be all right. We hope maybe it, it, it's a stinger. Sometimes yeah. those stingers appear worse at the beginning and then turn out to be pretty minor. And yeah. let's just pray that that's what this is. Yeah, and obviously you always use an abundance of caution, but to your point, let's hope this is something that uh, turns out to be okay. Just, gosh, always hate seeing this. Prayers be with that young man right there. See, they have really immobilized him. Alex Cook now on the cart being given best wishes by the team. Let's see some prayers being said over him as well. We hope that young man is going to be all right. Tried to make a tackle on Jalen John here moments ago. be taken away to be examined and we don't know if we will we hope to get a report on him sooner than later and as soon as we do if we do we will pass that along as he gets a round of applause from the crowd here in Tucson just what else I mean Jimmy Lake's team uh, yeah. what else the second year head coach who replaced Chris Peterson who retired in 2019 has not had a great year. It's been one thing after another. This is the most recent thing. And again, Alex Cook, we, we hope the best for him. Yeah, absolutely. 26 seconds to go here in the first quarter. As they will do a direct snap to Jamari Joyner and the wide receiver who's going to do a lot of Wildcat quarterbacking tonight takes it ahead for the first down as we're back to action here in Tucson and that might be the last play of the quarter. We'll see. It will be. And 
Big stop in the action right there, but yeah. uh, it'll be Arizona ball here when we come back. Just a just a downer. Yeah. Just a downer. And again, we hope Alex Cook is going to be all right. We've played one in Tucson. Three nothing, Arizona. Three nothing, Arizona. The Wildcats have the ball as we start the second quarter. We're going to show you what happened to Alex Cook who was injured late in the first quarter, and he has been taken to Banner University Medical Center, we understand. Oh, mm. well, you can see it's a shot to the head. That, uh, that had him down for a long time. Tiff, uh, what do you know down on the field? Hey guys, I did watch him being loaded up into the ambulance. I was just told though that he does have movement in his arms oh. and his legs oh. and he is responsive. I'm also keeping an eye on the bench over here. Pretty somber, but the guys are trying to lift each other's spirits, walking around, giving each other high fives. Oh, guys. that is great news, great. Tiffany. Thank you so much for that. Will Plummer has been chased a lot already here in this ball game. That's going to be a yard pickup for the quarterback. As we settle back into some rhythm maybe in this football game, Arizona has the lead. Uh, Will Plummer still trying to establish this offense, though. Yeah, it looks like they're really making a, an emphasis to try to run the ball. Here it goes with a pass. And Ooh, Barry Hill. The screen to the receiver, and Barry Hill is cut by Radley Hiles right where he stood. And that'll be a loss. It'll be third down and long. Yeah, Riley Hiles, he's a smart guy. Yeah, he knows that the ball is going to go to Stanley Berryhill a bunch of times. So let, let's find number one and go make a play at. Riley Hiles has done such a great job. The Oklahoma transfer. He likes to run around and hit people, too. It's uh, his second game back after getting nicked up in that Cal win. Third and 13 for Arizona. Just 28% this year on third down. That's last in the Pac-12. Plummer, second start of the season tonight. It's complete, but it's not going to be anywhere close to a first down for B.J. Castile. Trent McDuffie, the cornerback, preseason All-Pac-12, closed in quickly in its fourth down. There's a lot of speed and experience in this secondary for Washington. Trent McDuffie who just had a nice play. Kyler Gordon does a great job back there. Obviously, Radley Hiles, who we talked about. It's been the, the, the front line that's really been the detriment of this team, but on the back end, they got some playmakers. Giles Jackson back to return for Washington. Second punt for Austin Dorp. And this is a boomer. Inside the 10. Wow. And dead inside the five. Kyle Austin Dorp with a 75 yard punt. Back in a moment. ESPN College Football in Tucson tonight, presented by Ram Trucks, 3-0, Arizona. There you see Kate Otten, number 87 for Washington, among the best tight ends in the country. First team all Pac-12 last year. He hasn't been involved much tonight. He hasn't, and again, I think a tight end is, is a quarterback's best friend. You go to him. He's the number three tight end on Mel Kuyper's latest big board. Nice size kid. You know, he missed a couple games, but he was back last week versus UCLA. Had three catches for 26. He's a playmaker. You know me, Clay. I'm always a fan. Who's your best player? Let's find a way to get the ball in their hands. That's usually a good start. Yeah. Well, Dylan Morris is going to lead this series again. The starting quarterback for Washington missed one series because of a bloody nose. Sam Heward came out. Had an uneventful drive. As Jalen Harris makes that stop, it's a seven-yard pickup for Pleasant. Again, it's about the Washington run game tonight. They got to try and get it going. They're going with a little tempo here. And now we get a stoppage and a timeout called for by Arizona. Now kick off your week seven Sunday NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern with the crew. They're going to have everything you need to know right before kickoff. Presented by Snickers. And former Washington Husky Vita Vea, the 2017 Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. 
Only played in five games last season because of injury, but uh, came back in time for the Bucks to win the Super Bowl <laughs> over the Chiefs. One of the most popular guys in the NFL, a former Husky. And look, I heard Sean McVay, head coach of the Rams, a couple weeks ago say he thinks Vita Vea is the best, most impactful defensive player in the NFL. Now, that's saying a lot. Yeah. Big boy, 350 pounds. That's I'd love to play behind that guy. And Dominic and Sue <laughs> run around. This linebacker just running around making tackles. Woo. So after the Arizona timeout, a second and three for Washington. Pleasant stood up again. That offensive line for Washington, unable to control the line of scrimmage. Yeah, rock. Just so few times this year, Clay, have you seen the surge by this Washington offensive line where they're just consistently moving bodies off the line of scrimmage. Just haven't seen it. And if you want to get a run game going, it starts with those guys up front. They're averaging less than two yards per play so far. Third down and two. You know, Don Brown, the defensive coordinator, loves to give the quarterback a ton of looks and try to create some hesitation. Morris from the gun, looking to throw, finds the receiver, and he got it behind him. Oh, Jalen McMillan was going downfield. Morris threw it behind him. That failed to click. Fourth down, they're going to have to punt again. And, and you hate to say it, but that's just been the story with Dylan Morris this year, just the inexplicable miss. I mean, th there's an opportunity to complete that pass. It's just behind him for no reason. I, I just you don't know if it is. Is it a confidence thing? Is it a I, you don't know exactly what's going on, but it's got to change if this Washington offense is going to get rolling. Morris so far, one completion for nine yards. And Washington, 32 yards of total offense. This punt from Race Porter, a little rugby style, backs up Barry Hill. And it's fair caught around the 35-yard line. Got a pillow fight going on here in Tucson. <laughs> we'll see what happens when we come back with 11.56 to go in the half. It's been a weird year in the Pac-12. Week one, UCLA upset number 16, LSU, and then Montana shocked Washington. Week two, Oregon upset Ohio State, putting the Pac-12 in the playoff conversation, and USC fired Clay Helton. Week three, UCLA loses at home to Fresno State. Then in week five, Stanford would outlast Oregon in overtime, another blow to the Pac-12, and last week Utah dominated the second half in beating number 18, Arizona State. You, you just don't know what's going to happen from week to week. Right, and on one hand you say there's no dominant team, but on the other hand you say it's a lot of fun, right? A lot mm -hmm. of parody, you know, that sort of thing, but no team in the Pac-12 has really emerged as a strong candidate right now. So Arizona has it. Decent field position at the 36-yard line. They've only got 15 yards of offense, though, so far tonight. It'll be Jalen John with another carry. Carson Bruner, son of Mark Bruner, who played in the NFL, linebacker, makes the tackle. So this Washington defense, as you look at the total yards for both teams, it's, it's been uninspiring for sure. What's been the story for this Washington defense and why it hasn't been great? You know, I looked at it all week, Clay, and I think the issue I mentioned earlier is, is gap integrity. you got guys, you know, everybody's got to be in a gap. Everyone's got to have their gap. And what happens, some guys are getting nosy. They're peeking in here, peeking in there, and it's not sound. Here it is. It's not sound here as Barry Hill gets it inside the 30-yard line. Stanley Barry Hill. Their best offensive player, they're going to get it to him as many different ways as they can. Here he picks up 34 on the sweep. And that's the thing, you got an A gap, B gap, C gap, D gap, and everyone's got to be in there. And some guy tries to peek in somewhere, and right there, that's just poor leverage. You, know, you, you got to have leverage, and Asa Turner comes up. you got to force that thing back to your teammates here where they can come and help you. Instead, he lets it get outside, and that's what Barry Hill does. Just little fundamental things is just really hurting this defense. And on top of it, a lot of players injured. Go back to Jalen John for a small pickup. And here's our tied player spotlight, Stanley Berryhill. He is the number one receiver, receiver for Arizona, the second leading receiver in the Pac-12. Yeah, Jed Fishtar, he's a guy who never misses anything, practices, meetings, nothing. That's incomplete, intended for Joyner. Gonna be third down and eight. And 
Obviously, Barry Hill is going to come back out for this conversion attempt. Yeah, and here we are again. Arizona's done okay moving the ball between the 30s, but now it's getting down in tight. And just haven't been able to convert. Let's go down to Tiffany. Hey, guys. Quarterback Will Plummer told me that Barry Hill is one of the most dependable players he's ever been around in his life. He called him a safety blanket on the field. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's why he's out here on third down and eight. Plummer over the middle and guess what? They got a first down to Stanley Berryhill. There you go, Tiff. <laughs> right on cue, the safety blanket. Critical moment. Let's look to number one. And this is just a good job of a release and getting downfield. A little tempo. That's Darius Bam Smith. Gets a carry for two yards. And this is a good job here. Obviously a great release, but then a nice pocket there for Plummer. Doesn't have to rush it. Easy throw. Hit the guy. First down. Barry Hill caught a couple of touchdowns against Washington last year in what was a, another lopsided game. Washington won it, but Barry Hill always has an impact, it seems. Back to Jalen John slipping away into the secondary inside the 10 down at about the seven that's a gain of seven before Irvin makes the stop and and I got the feeling Arizona thought we can really hit Washington with a downhill between the tackles run this is a good job by John just a good you know getting that momentum going and here's another one right up the middle and John making his way to the end zone he's going to be stopped short they're going to mark him inside the one and they're going with tempo quickly up on the line. Plummer calls for the snap, goes back to John, and this time Washington was ready for him. That was Asa Turner, the safety, wrapping him up. And go back to last week against Colorado, same situation. They had the ball first and goal on the one-yard line and could not punch it in. They tried to go with a little tempo there, catch Washington's defense off guard, but they were not. Now John will come out of the game. There's Jed Fish. He is head coach, also the play caller. Jamari Joyner will take the direct snap. Joyner to run it in. And he got it, but there's a marker down. Penalty flag on the field. It is a touchdown for Joyner. This might be... players on defense. That penalty is yep. declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. 12 players on the field oh. for UW. How does that happen? But yeah, look, that, that's the thing. Been moving the ball well, but now they get down inside tight, and they went with the run. Love the call there with the Wildcat. Joiner at quarterback. Downhill punches that thing inside. Touchdown, Arizona. 10 play drive. And Tyler Luke. Comes on for the point after. How about this? Arizona with a 10-0 lead on Washington. They're hoping that 18-game losing streak, the longest in the country, comes to an end tonight. Jamari Joyner capping the drive. 8-16 to go before half. Back here in Tucson where they love the great outdoors in this part of the country. It's 10-0 Arizona leading Washington. Danny, Andy, Jamie, Kyle, Cindy from our crew taking advantage of uh, the ATV rentals at Tucson Adventure Rentals. That's Some my great kind shots. of fun right there. Yeah, yeah. Love, love that. that. They had a blast. Surprise here with Arizona leading midway through the second quarter. And Washington will start at the 25. Week 7, Monday Night Football. Alvin Kamara, the 3-2 and two Saints, coming off by in Seattle to take on DK Metcalf and the Seahawks. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern. And 3 Pacific. Pete Carroll went to Seattle after tearing up the pack at USC. Of course, won a Super Bowl. Kind of a tough go in Seattle this year so far. Two and four record, no Russell Wilson. 
And there is uh, yeah. Arizona offensive coordinator Brennan Carroll, who spent the last six years coaching under his dad, Pete, now here in Tucson, working for Jed Fish. Fish does call the plays, but Carroll, of course, has a lot of input and might have maybe the best beard in college football. Exceptional beard. Roma <laughs> Dunze with the touch there for Washington. That's a that's a good beard. Yeah, it really is. I mean, well kept, clean, I assume. Yeah, whole deal. So Dylan Morris, who has been uninspiring at quarterback for Washington, two for four, 15 yards. Trying to get this offense on track, especially the run game. McGrew going straight ahead. He is not a big guy at 5'7", 180. Gets close to the first down, but it'll be short. Third and one coming up. And it does make you wonder, right? Why, why no Sam Heward here? He's already been in the game, so you, you've, you've burned this game for him. You know, I, I guess you say, look, let's go with a guy with a little more experience here. But at some point in this game, if he doesn't get this offense cranking, it might be time to go back to Sam Heward. McGrew is going to take the direct snap. As the quarterback lines up as a receiver, it is Giles Jackson picking up the first down for Washington, and maybe that will grease the skids for the Huskies. Yeah, absolutely. Some positive play there. Good blocking on the outside there. Nice run by Jackson. Again, just so many playmakers. It's just, you know, got to find ways to get him the ball, got to get the offensive line to block a little bit better. And, and, and again, it's, it comes down to the quarterback hitting open guys. Offenses are very complex these days, and they're orchestrating a way to get wide open wide receivers. And when they're there, Dill Morris has got to hit them. First down from the 38. McGrew met in the backfield and beat up for a loss of two. Trayvon Mason, who's been active tonight. And also got Mo Diallo involved in that. Again, we talk about this defensive front, probably one of the strong aspects of the team. That was all Diallo. Good job swimming that block and getting in the backfield. Well, it's not like the Huskies haven't tried to get the run game going. That's what they've been going to mostly. 17 runs, just mm -hmm. five passes, but only 28 yards of rushing offense so far. Looking to throw here, Morris. Quick release. There's Kate Otten. His first catch tonight, and he is good after the catch. That big body gets it across the 45 to the 46-yard line. It'll be third and short. Good. Do it again. Kate on a nice job getting open. Didn't Dylan Morris put the ball right between the numbers. There you go. Now let's get up there and get another one going. First team all pack 12. His first catch. Arizona brings five. McGrew wow. trying to get leverage on the outside. He's stopped by Jalen Harris. The speedy junior from Mesa, Arizona, cuts him down in the backfield, and now it's fourth down. And decision time for Jimmy Lake. And, Clay, I've been watching this all week, watching Jalen Harris. I mean, he plays the option better than I've seen any defensive end in football this year. He just has a knack for it, obviously, being as athletic as he is really helps out there, but he just strung that thing out and used his speed and brought him down. Just nothing from this offense nothing, tonight. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They are going to punt. Race Porter coming out again. Barry Hill standing at the five-yard line for Arizona to return. And another fair catch. There's a little bump. I don't think it was intentional. The uh, crowd wants a penalty flag. They're not going to get one. It was Dominique Hampton who accidentally bumped into Barry Hill. Ten nothing Arizona. 4-12 to go. Second quarter. Clay Mantic, Rocky Boyman, Tiffany Blackman as we 
Look ahead to a great Saturday of college football again across the networks. Number two, Cincinnati. Are they going to have any trouble with Navy? I, I don't think so. I, I think they go in there and take care of business, which, which they have to do. We've talked about it a lot. You know, they have to keep winning. They have to keep winning with authority, and they've done that the last two weeks. You and I had the Temple game a couple weeks ago. Plummer off the play fake, slides up in the pocket, now wants to run on first down. And it's a good run. He slides at the 20, took a hit. There's the flag. And again, Will Plummer, the only scholarship quarterback remaining on the roster for Arizona. They've got to protect him. Yeah, you knew Jed Fish was holding his breath as Plummer was rolling out, but you can so see how dynamic he is down. in the run game. There is no foul for late hit. There was no unnecessary contact by the defense. First down. Now they're going to pick up the flag. It looked like Julius Servin may have been in there late, but they pick up the flag. Yeah, on, on second look, though, Clay, I, I thought he did a good job of, of kind of pulling up, and he clearly didn't go for yeah. the head area there. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm okay with that call right there. Let's just let them guys keep playing. He wasn't trying to drill Plummer as he was going to the ground. This is a big drive for Arizona, especially if they can get points. They start with the football in the second half, already leading 10-0. Jamari Joyner gets it to Rocker. Stevie Rocker finding daylight in the secondary. Rocker inside the 30 of Washington. The big true freshman out of right here in Tucson, kind of a fullback running back hybrid, and that's the biggest play of the night for the Wildcats. Clay, if you want to get a win, you got to play team football. Watch Jamari Joyner with the lead block here on the safety. Just enough to get him back out in the open field, and then Rocker does the rest. That's great stuff there by Joyner. That's a 52-yard pickup. As Plummer goes to the outside, and quickly B.J. Castile is cut down by McDuffie. That is only the second play this year of 40 yards or more that this Washington defense has given up. And, and look, that, that is college football. That's pro football these days. It's the explosive plays. You've got to have them. You've got to stop them on defense. You've got to get them on offense. And neither of these teams have had those explosive plays this season. And again, this is a Washington defense that is shorthanded tonight. And as you see, the rush yards now way out of whack in favor of Arizona. Plummer. Nobody home on the near sideline. Barry Hill, the closest man, incomplete. Second down and 12. Check that third and 12. It was a good job of getting rid of that ball by Plummer. He had ZTF, the pass rushing phenom, coming off the offense's right side there. He's been dynamic the few plays he's played here tonight. Getting some hurries on the quarterback. And and we're going to third down, critical third down. you got Barry Hill coming out of the game. And they've got a good field goal kicker in Lucas Havrasik. He's the guy in charge of the long-range field goals. His career long is 57, getting close to his range right now. Timeout, Washington. Yep. See, trying to keep Arizona from adding any more points here before halftime. Let's go back to that noon slate. Oklahoma's in action, number three in the country. Michigan, uh, they're at home with Northwestern. Of course, Michigan is undefeated. Yeah, 6 0. They had the bye last week, and, you know, got those running backs Blake Corum, Hassan Haskins, got a combined 16 touchdowns on the season. And, you know, Michigan is really kind of becoming a factor in this playoff race. Wake Forest, 6 0. Dave Clawson has done a great job. With the Demon Deacons, All-State playoff predictor. There you see it, Georgia, Oklahoma, Cincinnati, all good percentages. So does Alabama. Michigan and Ohio State, you basically can add those two percentages together when <laughs> uh, when you get the winner out of that. Correct. Give it to that team. Yeah, they go undefeated and they meet up at the end of the season. That's what's going to come down to. Wow. Stevie Rocker to Barry Hill. And now Rocker is cut down. And it's going to be fourth down. And that may take him out of field goal range. That was a huge stop by Washington there. Arizona goes with the gimmick here. Barry Hill, the little flip back, and but Radley Hiles, again, doesn't tackle him, doesn't bring him down, but stops him enough to, until the cavalry can get there. And another timeout, second charge timeout for Washington. 
So here comes Lucas Haversick, veteran kicker. He handles the kickoffs and the long-range field goal attempts. He's been really good this year. 7 of 10, long of 46. His career long, as I said earlier, 57. Mm. During the warm-ups here tonight, he was hitting from 55 pretty easily. Yeah, he's got the range. Certainly come in handy here right now. An opportunity for Arizona to go up by 13, a position they haven't been in, been in much this season. And as you mentioned, get the ball coming out of halftime here. It's going to be about a 50-yard attempt. A season long, if he can hit it. Haversick with ease. Wow. Oh, my. That would have been good from 65. Easily. <laughs> he bammed that thing. Good night. Ooh. And Arizona has a two-score lead, 13 to nothing, just ahead of halftime. Yeah, he just absolutely drills that ball. And, and look, you look over on that Arizona sideline right now, you know, a lot of belief, a lot of guys yeah. having some fun over there, and th this is a good thing. And now it's up to the defense right now with 2.23 on the clock. If they can force a three and out or stop Washington from scoring, they go into halftime feeling real good. That is the sixth career 50-plus yard field goal for Lucas Haversick. And Jed Fish is feeling good, you know. Chuck Cecil, coach of mine with the Tennessee Titans, he's now the defensive back coach at Arizona. He stopped in the booth, said hello to me, he said, hey, we got the right guy. Jed Fish is the right guy to bring this program back, and right now they're feeling real good. 0-6, 0-3 in the Pac-12, but they got a lead on the Pac-12 North preseason favorites, the Washington Huskies. Well, this season, along with their contributions to the university's general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. We say thank you to Allstate. So far, the Washington offense has been anemic. 54 total yards. And, and I got to say, five yeah, I, I got to say this, if if. Dylan Morris doesn't lead this team down right now and at least get some points on the board. you got to come out of halftime with Sam Hewitt, don't you? I mean, this is, in my opinion, one of the last opportunities for Morris. Throws on first down, gets it to Bynum, and he is immediately blasted. And now the Arizona Wildcats showing off. Jackson Turner popped him, so did Hodge for a loss of two. It's a great job. That's just a little extension of the run game there, but it was a Don Brown-style defense. They don't hold anything back. They come attack. That's what happened there, second 13. Morris pumps, comes underneath to his check down running back, Kamari Pleasant, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage and then gets a couple as Isaiah Rutherford, the transfer from Notre Dame, makes the stop, third down. Washington has one timeout remaining. They're two of seven on third down tonight. That Who do Jaylen, they go to? Yeah, I think Jalen McMillan down the bottom of the screen there. Also Terrell Bynum in the slot up top. You know, Kate Odd, plenty of opportunities, plenty of places to go with this football. And man coverage for Arizona. Pressure coming. Morris gets it to Otten, and did he get the first down? It's going to depend on the spot. Looks like he got a favorable one out across the 35. Rutherford again the stop, but they will move the chains with 1.08 to go in the half. That was a great job by Otten there. He took a shot, but he just kept his momentum going and got to the sticks. Huskies have a timeout in their pocket. Morris loads deep down the sideline. It's overthrown by five yards. 
incomplete intended for Odunze who has been very quiet here tonight. He has been targeted only two times, one catch for six yards. And, and Adunze was covered there, and, and I still, I, I don't hate that play call because Rome, Rome Adunze has the catch radius, he has the size, but give him a chance, right? Like, put a ball up there up top where he can jump in the sky and pull that thing down. He, he, he never had a prayer for that ball. Arizona's best cover corner, Roland Wallace, was on him. 54 seconds to go in the half. Blitz picked up. Morris again throwing deep and again nowhere near the receiver Odunze. Stooks in on the coverage that time. And here we go with another third down. It is a good job by Stooks there again. Just disrupting the timing. Just not allowing Odunze a clean get off off the line of scrimmage. But still the ball's pretty overthrown. It's been an awful half for Washington. The worst news, of course, Alex Cook carted off at the end of the first quarter, the starting safety for the Huskies. The good news is he was moving his extremities. He was taken to Banner University Medical Center. We're hoping to get more on his condition. Let's see what Don Brown dials up here on defense. Dylan Morris out of the pocket, looking downfield. On the hoof, takes it out of bounds, well short of the line to gain. 41 seconds to go in the half. Kenny Abair escorted him out. Just nothing downfield. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, a great job. They brought the pressure, forced him outside the pocket. It was th to his throwing arm. But uh, again, nowhere to go with that football down the field there. I'll tell you what, a great job of Christian Young, the Viper position in man-to-man -man coverage on KDOT. And that's a tough task. And Christian Young, one of their best defensive players, did a good job eliminating the tight end. If Barry Hill can give the Wildcats a good return here, Arizona has 40 seconds to work with and a few timeouts. And it's going to be dead at the 16-yard line. It's a 48-yard punt from Ray's Porter. Don't forget... Big Saturday of college football, Oregon and UCLA. That's where college game day will be tomorrow morning. They're telling the folks at UCLA to get on campus around 4 a.m. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> if you want a spot for college game day, you That's better right. get there get early. Cranked up. Tennessee, Alabama in the primetime window on ESPN tomorrow night. 30 seconds to go. Arizona with a 13 to nothing lead. And John with a conservative play. Gets it across the 20 to the 21. Looks like Arizona can tend to take this thing into halftime here with a 13 to nothing lead. Well, the blocked punt that turned into three points kind of set the tone for this half. For it really Arizona. did. Just got some momentum for a team that needed some in a big way. Got that momentum early, and it's been all Arizona this whole first half. 13 to nothing Wildcats trying to end an 18 game losing streak. The fans hoping this is the night. Matt Berry and Joey Galloway will get us set up for a big college football Saturday tomorrow in the studio when we come back after this timeout. Back in Tucson, Arizona, ESPN College Football presented by Ram Trucks. Pac-12 after dark. Washington team in the dark right now. 13 to nothing as we get ready for the start of the second half. Clay Mappick, Rocky Boyman, Tiffany Blackman with you. The losing streak for Arizona. Is it poised to come to an end tonight? The longest losing streak in the country right now at 18 games going back to 2019. But Washington has a lot of deficiencies. We'll get into more of that later. The story of that first half, Rock, the Arizona defense under Don Brown. Absolutely, and things got to start off. Isaiah Taylor has the block punt. Yeah. Some much needed momentum for this Wildcat team, but you're right. It's been the defense of Arizona. That, that's been the real story tonight. And as again, we see the block punt there. That got the momentum. But then five tackles for loss, three of them sacks. And Washington offense just looks totally befuddled right now. You wonder, does Dylan Morris come back out at quarterback? Do they go with Sam Hewer? But either way, someone, somebody has got to get something going for this Washington team. Don Brown 
Spent the last five years at Michigan. The Wolverines ranked in the top ten of defense four times. Got fired after a poor year last year. Landed here in Tucson with the Arizona Wildcats. And they have held five of six opponents under 400 yards this year. I, I don't know that that's going to be a problem tonight. Washington held to 65 yards in the first half. No, but what we mentioned about this defense is the one thing they're missing is the takeaway. If Arizona gets a takeaway or two in the second half, it could really bode well for them. But Dylan Morris, 6 of 10, throwing about 30 yards in the first half, has just not been able to get this Washington offense going. As we take another look at Don Brown, Done a good job coaching this team. Been doing it a long, long time. Giving a lot of different looks out there for that Washington team. Arizona starts with the football. They had 129 rushing yards in the first half. An offense that came into the night averaging 114 per game. And that just speaks to how poor the Washington run defense has been. Tavian Cunningham. Back to return. This is going to be a touchback. And the Wildcats will start at the 25 as we go down to Tiffany. Guys, this was a really upbeat Arizona team running into halftime and a really encouraged head coach, Jeff Fish. And when I talked to him, he told me they've been challenging their guys to treat the second half of the season like halftime, with the score being 0-0. He said the result will be based on their attitude and their effort. And so far, he likes what he's seeing tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I would say. It, yeah, effort's been great all year, but now it's just you know a, a young team that is not used to winning. As this game starts to continue on into the second half here, do they make the plays they have to make to get that victory? Jalen John in the backfield, and he'll get the hand up from Will Plummer, and on first down, he'll pick up about four. Jed Fish is looking for his first win as a full-time head coach. You'll remember he was... UCLA's interim head coach Rocky for a while uh, in 2017 after Jim Mora got fired he went one and one as the Bruins interim head coach trying to win his first one here in Tucson and he was really upbeat when we talked to him here this week he thinks he has this program going in the right direction and Arizona is going to keep running it until Washington can prove they can stop it as John gets another toe to four yard pickup and you mentioned how well they've run the ball tonight and that's without their best running back. Drake Anderson is out yeah. tonight with a shoulder injury. It's been a lot of Jalen John, the bigger running back. Again, with those downhill runs between the tackles that have just plagued this Washington defense all season. Drake Anderson, a transfer from Northwestern, dealing with a shoulder injury. He has, before tonight, the only rushing touchdown of the year for Arizona. You'll find Barry Hill. Stanley Barry Hill makes the catch. It's going to be just short of the line to gain. So fourth down here. And now we'll see how froggy Jet Fish is here. Is he going to go for it or are they going to punt? I don't think he's feeling that froggy yet here. And a missed opportunity to find a way to move the sticks there. Looked like Barry Hill set up just before the sticks there. Weren't able to get it here. Giles Jackson, the transfer from Michigan, an all Big Ten return man for the Wolverines. There's a couple of career kickoff return touchdowns, both for Michigan. He's back inside the 20. Austin Dorp gets it away. Boy, Washington could use a lift on special teams. They're not going to get it here as it rolls out inside the 20. 48 yard punt for Austin Dorp. And, and I, I think you're. you're Washington's defense, you got to feel pretty good about that. You know, you feel, you know, Arizona has a lot of momentum. They get the ball in the second half, three and out, and now you get the ball back to their offense. And it looks like it is going to be Dylan Morris going to come back out here. You know, I, I, I think I talked about it in the first half there. At some point, if he is not moving this offense, if he's not generating any plays, do you not look again to Sam Heward, who did have a series early in that first half? I mean, somewhere, somebody's got to start making some plays here. Morris is going to start out under center, Luke Wattenberg. 
And he's going to boot out to the left and throws on the run, and it's incomplete. And, and, and it should have been caught. It was behind the receiver for sure, but Taj Davis did get his hands on it. I see a Rutherford in on the coverage. But a Division I quarterback has got to lead the wide receiver. There's no excuse for that ball being behind the wide receiver. He's open. It's, it, it, again, just the, the missed throws for no particular reason is just plagued Morris in this offense. Davis, the leading pass catcher coming into the night for Washington. His first full football season in three years. Redshirted in 2019 and opted out last year. They'll go to the run game as Tatum makes the tackle on McGrew. And that's going to be a pickup of three. And now here, a early third down in the second half again for Washington. They were not great on third down in the first half. Go with a four-wide look here, trying to spread that defense. That looks like some pressure coming for Arizona. Yeah, it looks like they drew the Wildcats off. Morris with a free play is going to take a shot, and it is intercepted. Picked off by Jackson Turner. Now, it looked like Arizona was offside, yeah. so it's not going to matter. You know, Turner in the first half, remember, nearly had a pick. Nearly did, yeah. But he was out of bounds. This one's not going to count either. Does a good job playing center field there. Defense and offside around. in the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty. Replay third down. That's Tatum, the Fresno State transfer. And was smart there by Morris. Sensing the offsides. Take a shot downfield. But again, ball placement just continues to be the issue. So a break for Washington, but now can they pick up the third and two? Again, this is a team that has not run the ball well here. This is an area in a down where you want to. They're going to throw it. And it is caught. Spinning away. McMillan, he's got the first down and more. Biggest play of the night for this Washington offense. Into plus territory. Roland Wallace makes the tackle. It's a gain of 30 for the Huskies. And a good job breaking the tackle. Jaden Young, the safety, came up. But then McMillan, just a good job breaking that tackle, spinning, and finally some positive momentum here for this offense. Jaden Young had him knocked Dead the behind right. the line yep. if he'd have just been able to wrap it up. So now first down from the 44 of Arizona. 13 to nothing, Arizona leading. Trying to end an 18-game losing streak. The Blitz got rid of it. Pleasant hit behind the line. That's going to be a loss of two as Mo Diallo, who was absolutely terrific in the first half, makes that tackle. He's been fantastic, but this Arizona defense just flies around. And for, I would say, a complex scheme that Don Brown runs, a lot going on, this defense doesn't look like it's out there thinking. It looks like it's out there running around, flying around, playing loose, and making plays. That's the sixth tackle for loss now for Arizona. Diallo, he's been great all year. He has a couple of safeties to his credit this season. So now second and 11. Inside handoff, Pleasant. No room up the middle. Immediately met, leading the charge, Jerry Roberts, the middle linebacker. Here's another third down. <laughs> What a great middle linebacker play there. Taking on a block, defeating the block, and making a tackle. Forcing third and ten. Washington needs somebody to make a play. Got Roma Dunze at the top of the screen. Looks like in man-to-man -man coverage. And timeout. Arizona. Don Brown uh, not happy with something. He always has a stern look on his face. <laughs> That's right. The grizzled veteran. Yeah, and I think what he was upset about, I don't think he had enough guys on the field, and there they are lined up on a third and ten. And he had to burn a timeout. Like, come on, you gotta get yeah, and I think it was Mason just wasn't on the field there for that third down call. Yeah, you hate to use those timeouts so early in the half. And he's not letting it go. He's so upset about it. <laughs> we'll see if that uh, burn timeout comes back to haunt Arizona as this game wears on. It also gives Washington a chance to collect their thoughts on a big third down. That's right. They get a chance to look at the defense here to see what Arizona may run. But right now, everybody up on the line of scrimmage, just one safety deep. 
for Arizona. Morris, five-step drop. Cox fires, caught, Bynum. He's loose, 20, and pulled down inside the 20 from behind by Roland Wallace. Big play, good throw on time by Dylan Morris. And, and this is what is frustrating about Dylan Morris. We've seen the missed throws, but this is a great one. We're, the ball is right down low, out in front of the wide receiver. Good job recognizing man coverage, and you get the crossing route, a little bit of a natural pick there, and he puts the ball in the money. It's it's just that easy. If you can get a guy open, hit him in stride, make good things happen. Second catch for Bynum. And now Washington inside the red zone. It's been a playground for him, really. 16 for 16 with 11 touchdowns. Just haven't been here enough. And that one's knocked away by Jalen Harris. How good has Harris, the captain for the Cats, been tonight? He has been fantastic, especially in the run game. He's had a sack, and now he's almost getting an interception. You see those long levers by the six foot five Harris, long arms. <laughs> Just does a lot for that defense. He yeah, does have long arms. Look at yeah. that. Look at that. Looks, boop, reach up there, big hands. He's a heck of a player. Three wide to the right. Morris looking at two receivers to his left on second and ten. Pump fake. Still looking to the left. Throw into the end zone. Is that caught? Yes, touchdown, Washington. Terrell Bynum, his fourth touchdown grab of the year, just out muscled his defender to score from 16 away. And let's give credit to Dylan Morris. This ball is put on the absolute money. A good job, a little kind of a delayed route there, but the ball's up high. I mean, he is well covered, but then Bynum just wrestling that thing to the ground, but. Again, Morris with a great job, nice throw. Bynum's best game this year, that five-catch game for 115 and a touchdown at Michigan. He's a game-changer, and Washington is hoping that Bynum maybe has lit a fire here with that touchdown grab, the extra point. As there's a penalty flag on the point after, and I think this is going to be on Arizona. It's not going to matter. There is no foul for 12 players on defense. There was 11. The extra point is good. Timeout on the field. So count the kick for Henry. And it's now 13 to 7 after an eight play, 81 yard drive. The best drive of the night for Washington for sure. They're on the board here in Tucson. Welcome back to Tucson, where Arizona leads at 13 to 7 over Washington. We're here in the third quarter, and I did speak with Washington coach Lake, and he gave me a positive update on Alex Cook, who was taken away in an ambulance earlier in the game. He told me that Cook is awake and that he is doing quite well. He said he's got movement in all extremities. He told me that they're just waiting to hear back on a scan, but that he, the fact that he has movement is definitely positive news, guys. No doubt about That's it. That's huge. That is great news. news. We wish the best for Alex Cook, who was hurt late in the first quarter. Uh, it's a team that came into this game. We talked about Tiffany had the report at the beginning of the game. Five players didn't even make the trip. Several starters. I mean, this is a banged up Washington team, but it looked good on that last drive. They're back in this football game. Well, it's a banged up team that did not play well at all on either side of the ball in the first half, but now have seized some momentum. They come out, they get a three and out on defense, and then march the ball downfield and get a touchdown. They're right back in this thing. Wildcat quarterback Jamari Joyner. He's a wide receiver by trade, but we've seen him in this role more tonight. On first down, he picks up seven. And it is important right now for Arizona to respond. And this is where you worry about teams that are young, teams that are winless. When things start to go bad, they start to fold here. they got to find a way to seize that momentum back, get something going on offense. Yeah, like you said, Jed Fish said, still learning how to win. So many guys in this program have never won a college football game. Stevie Rocker among them. The freshman gets the first down on that gain of four for the Wildcat offense. And it's still got to be frustrating for Washington fans just seeing teams run the football on this front. 
147. It's pretty good. And that one's not going anywhere for Rocker as Cooper McDonald, freshman starting outside linebacker, makes the stop. That's going to be a loss of one. Arizona, one of only two remaining winless teams in the FBS this year. UNLV lost to San Jose State last night, so the Rebels are 0-7. Before last year's 0-5 season for Arizona, the last winless team in the Pac-12, Washington Huskies, the 0-12 wow. year in 2008. That was Tyrone Willingham's last season. Play fake to Jalen John. Here is Plummer rolling out. On the run, throws to a wide open receiver. Caught first down, out across midfield, B.J. Castile. That's what they like to see Will Plummer do. That truly is when he's at his best on the move like that. And that's right. You know, again, you don't want to run him where he's going to be taking shots, but getting him outside the pocket where he has a clear field of vision to fight Castillo, who just kind of hid there. He didn't run much, and I think the Washington defense just lost track of where he was. It was a good job of Plummer hitting him. Third catch for Castile tonight. Second leading receiver for Arizona. And they'll go back to the ground game of Jalen John and another good first down carry for Arizona. On first down, the Arizona run game has been very good. It has, but I've talked about it. Gap integrity. Everybody's got to have a gap up front. And John's running that ball in the interior, right? Someone's in the B gap. Who has the A gap there? Well, nobody. And that equates to a positive run. You just can't have that. You can't get you know, your nose caught peeking and going into another gap. Got to stay in there. Second and two from the 42 of Washington. They'll move the chains again, first down. Boy, that was a strong run from Jalen John. 5'11", 221. He's a load to bring down. It really is. We talked about the downhill nature, especially with Jalen John at 220 pounds. Nothing fancy about it. Just handing him the ball, getting some surge by that offensive line, and picking up first downs. We have not seen Michael Wiley tonight. A little bit of Stevie Rocker, but of course no Drake Anderson, their leading rusher, who's out with an injury. It's been primarily Jalen John. Plummer to the air again. This one is complete to Cunningham. The veteran wideout will pick up about six on that play as Radley Hiles makes another tackle from his nickelback spot. And we've got to mention right now, Arizona's done a great job of taking care of the football. Will Plummer has not tried to force anything, put the ball in harm's way. they got to continue to do that and stay with this run game. Just manage the game. That's manage all it. Jed That's Fish it. wanted. He's 9 of 11 for 39 yards, no touchdowns. More importantly, no turnovers. And this time John is hit. And it's going to be a loss. Jackson Sermon, the Brentwood, Tennessee native, makes the stop. That's right, and I played with his dad, the great Peter Sermon, who's now the defensive coordinator with Cal. And, and really, I'll tell you what, his dad, a smart player, but an athletic guy, too. He and I used to always joke, and as coaches, you're either an athletic guy or a smart guy. Well, his dad was both, and, and so is Jackson Sermon, his son. He's done a great job, just a sophomore. Man. Third down and five. Arizona three of eight on third down. Barry Hill, the catch. And it's a first down to the 23-yard line. And that was a good job of Plummer there, just uncorking that thing and letting it rip. He had just a little bit of a window there for Barry Hill, and he cut it loose, didn't hesitate, picked up the first down. And scanning the field, Barry Hill's open, boom, hit him. That's it. How about this drive for Arizona after the Washington score? This will be the 10th play of the series. Stevie Rocker again steps out of a tackle, lowers his shoulder, and gets down to about the 17-yard line. That was a strong run for the rookie, a product of Canyon Del Oro High School right here in town. And that was a good job because most of the runs by Arizona have been, again, between the tackles downhill, and that one was just a little bit to the perimeter and you know, maybe kind of catching Washington off guard a little bit and breaking a tackle. Getting to the perimeter. You can see this Washington defense a little winded. See some hands on some hips here with this long drive. Joiner again out of the Wildcat. Gives it to Rocker. 
Bounces to the outside, and that's going to be another first down for Arizona as they're on the doorstep in the red zone. Kyler Gordon makes the tackle, but it's a gain of six, and it's first down. And again, this defensive line, the defensive tackles out. Sam Tamani, who didn't make the trip. And Latuli Nasanoa just couldn't get off a block in time to make a play. Arizona right now averaging 6.3 yards on first down. That's yeah. how you win. We're going to stick with what's working, and that's the running game. Washington at a loss to stop it as Jalen John gets it to the seven yard line. A flag flies. Holding. Offense number 75. 10 yard penalty. First down. I mean, the drive had been going swimmingly up to that point. Top-ranked boxing tomorrow night from Atlanta. That's Tiffany's hometown. Our main event, Jamel Herring squaring off against undefeated Shakur Stevenson for Herring's WBO lightweight belt. Plus, Muhammad Ali's grandson, Nico, returns to the ring. Main card starts at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific on ESPN. Prelims begin at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN+. Plus. Clay Maffick, Rocky Boyman, Tiffany Boyman, Tiffany Blackman. <laughs> and now that's knocked down, and that's going to be incomplete for Joyner. And, and here it is again, right? Between the 30s, they move the ball well, but get inside the 30, inside the 25-yard line, you have a penalty, get behind the sticks. And then you got a, a guy who's not the quarterback. He's a running back playing Wildcat, just gets the ball tipped, and the red zone woes continue for Arizona. Joyner did throw a touchdown pass a couple of weeks ago against UCLA. And like you said, he's a former high school QB. Yeah. Can do it. It's just not his knack right now. I have a feeling they got to go back to Bear Hill down this area of the field. So now second and 20. As this drive is now going in the wrong direction. Plummer on the slant. That is complete. Caught by Joyner. And he's going to be wrapped up inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line. Third down and fairly long. They can pick up a first down at about the three. And I think the, the key right now is, again, no penalties. If nothing else, you, you're in line for a, a field goal attempt here that's very makeable. Have to imagine the ball's going to go to Barry Hill, and he's a guy, remember, he can break tackles lots of yards after the catch. And down the bottom of your screen. Plummer's looking that way. And he'll try to hit the former walk on Barry Hill. Incomplete. So now fourth down, and you would expect to see Luke Haversick here. Yeah, it looks like they are going to run the field goal unit out on the field. Instead, it's going to be Tyler Loop. Again, Loop deals with the field goals from a little closer range. This will be a 35-yarder. He hit a 34-yarder in the first quarter, first points of the game. And Arizona, not an explosive offense tonight, for sure. But they're getting points on these drives, and it's now 16-7 with 2.31 to go in the third. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN from Tucson, Arizona. Clay Matvick, Rocky Boyman, Tiffany Blackman. And our score is now 16-7 after the field goal. Capping a 15-play drive for the Wildcats. The Arizona women's basketball team that made that final four run last year, honored here tonight. They upset UConn by 10 in the national semifinal. Coach Barnes was all fired up. Pac-12 player of the year, Ari McDonald, had a great game, 26 points. Then lost to Stanford, unfortunately, 54-53 in an all-Pac-12 championship game. It was a great year. Disappointing finish, I'm sure, for them, but you look back and the national runner-up, not too shabby. And there they are, checking out the game. Cheering on the Wildcats who might end an 18-game losing streak here tonight. As the game gets a little longer in the tooth, it's now 16-7. to 
And that was a nice drive there. A little over seven minutes. Didn't get the touchdown, but got the field goal. They need to continue that. Washington, which has 141 yards of offense tonight, 34 on the ground, will try to get something going. They have the ball next. Great guest list for the Mannings tonight. You've reached Peyton and Eli. Leave a message. This is Liam Neeson. I have a very particular set of skills, none of which involves watching game film. Watch Peyton and Eli. You never know who will drop by. <laughs> the master, Frank Caliendo, <laughs> as Peyton and Eli make their return this week for Monday Night Football. Look forward to that. All right, Washington, which had to punt six times in the first half, one of which was blocked. Got a touchdown drive to start the second half, but on the first play of the ensuing series, Dylan Morris incomplete. Lee Vell Tatum was all over. Yeah, just a two-man route there, nowhere to go with a football for Morris. Now here you go, second down and 10. And Morris, we talked about before the game, right, Clay? The, inconsistency, the inconsistencies, we've seen that same thing tonight. A lot of missed throws. The last drive they had, though, not bad. 84 yards, eight plays. But now Morris in trouble, being chased from behind, and he's going to be hit at the 29. Third down and about seven coming up. Rashi Hodge, the weak side linebacker, combined with A. Baron Tatum. McGrew in the backfield on third down and six. Got Roma Dunze at the top of the screen. Still haven't found him much tonight. And Kate Otten has been pretty quiet tonight. Yeah. Just two catches for 17 yards. This is where they like number 87. Morris has time. Now he's running out of it. Goodbye. He's down for the count at the 23 again. Trayvon Mason, a six-yard loss. That is the fourth sack for this Arizona D tonight. And just a great D-line stunt off to the offense's left here. A little twist game. This comes all the way around the other side here. And Tray Trayvon Mason, known as a guy who's been great against the run, splits. The, the double team there and gets to the quarterback. What a statement play by Arizona's defense, who has played great all night. Just another disheartening three and out for the Washington offense. Barry Hill calls for the fair catch. And Arizona, which burned a ton of clock on its last possession, over seven minutes, will get it back with 50 seconds to go in the third. Saturday night football, it's a Big Ten battle in Bloomington. And C.J. Stroud and Travion Henderson leading the number five Buckeyes against the Hoosiers. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC. Ohio State has won 26 in a row against Indiana. But the Hoosiers are better than their record of 2-4 and four would indicate because four of those losses have come against the top 11 this week. That's right. Against Michigan State last week, had the three turnovers. Michael Penix not playing. At uh, Southern Cal and Notre Dame, a series that you're familiar with as a member of the Irish one time. Uh, they did not play that game last year. No. Because of COVID. Proud to say, 3-1 and one in my career against uh, USC. Is that right? Yeah. Jalen John will get the carry for a gain of two. Now the Washington defense really needs to make this quick. Because they're starting to run out of time in this football game. And the way the offense has been going... They can't afford to give up another seven-minute series. Yeah, absolutely cannot. And to open this half there, did a great job getting the three and out, but then last series, just a long, slow slog of a drive. Can't do it again. John straight up the middle, and it's going to be third down in about two, and it'll probably happen in the fourth quarter. The Arizona Wildcats haven't won a football game since 2019 over two years ago. They may end that long losing streak here tonight. 
Washington's got some work to do. They've shown signs of life here in the second half. They trail 16 to 7 going to the fourth quarter in Tucson. Arizona leading going to the fourth quarter. Jed Fish's team has had some hardships for sure the last couple of weeks, losing two quarterbacks for the season, Jordan McLeod and Gunnar Cruz. The old line a little beat up. Their leading rusher, Drake Anderson, hasn't played tonight. Jed Fish even held midseason walkthroughs last week looking for help. He didn't find any. But they may get the win here tonight to end a long losing streak. Jamari Joyner on third down and two. Takes it a long way for a first down. Give him 14. And, Clay, that tells you everything you need to know about how Arizona's offense feels about Washington's run defense. Third and three, critical play of the game. There was no doubt they were running the ball, mashing guys up front. That's a huge pickup for Arizona. They're closing in mm -hmm. on 200 yards rushing. You know, we, uh, we have seen this Washington run defense not really show signs of improvement throughout the year. As we get a flag. Ball start, 74 offense. Five-yard penalty, first out. It's Peyton Fears, the right tackle. Just a few penalties have crept up at inopportune times. Now I got first and 15. That's the seventh penalty against Arizona. They average eight again, a game, far too many. So first and 15. Stevie Rocker checks back in in the backfield. They'll give it to him. Bounces it out nicely to the outside. I'm impressed with his ability to uh, make quick decisions. Stevie Rocker, just a freshman. But again, no gap integrity right there, no edge. Brendan Radley Hiles is on the outside. He's got to force that back in. There's three defenders waiting to make the tackle. He allows him to get outside in a huge gain. It's just. Just not good football. He's the leading rusher tonight for the Wildcats. Seven carries, 79 yards. Jalen John has been the workhorse, though. 16 carries for 56. So that makes it second down and five. It'll be Rocker again. Nice stutter step, and he's got the first down. Flag comes in at the end of the play. But Rocker and John getting it done on the ground here for Arizona. This is going to go against Brandon Washington. Hunt, personal foul face mask wow. on the defense. 15 yards to the end of the run. Automatic first down. And, and how about, I mean, to start this season, it was Michael Wiley and Drake Anderson that do uh, running back. And now it's the freshmen, right? Yeah. Javon John and Stevie Rocker have done a great job tonight. And then the, the huge penalty. I mean, that's a great cut. He just put his foot in the ground and came across. And, it's a huge play. Again, now this is the area we've talked about that Arizona has trouble with inside the 30. Can they find a way to get it done? Play fake. Plummer off his back foot, dumps it off. In intercepted. Latuli Nasanoa picking that one off and a big play. Finally for this Washington defense, first turnover of the ball game. And just no business for Will Plummer to throw that football right there. Latuli Nasanoa is standing right there. There's a lot of garbage in the way for Will Plummer. He can't throw that ball. Plummer. His fourth interception of the year. That is the lift this Washington team needs. Big smile for Tuli Latuli Nasanoa's first interception of the year. And that's just the ninth takeaway for this Washington defense this season. Zero takeaways in three of their four losses. So that might be a turning point here tonight. Yes, absolutely. And the offense needs to take advantage. But, you know, for Nasanoa, I'd love seeing a big man getting the interception. But there's Will Plummer. Just a ball he should not have thrown. A mistake by the youngsters. Throw that ball away. Throw it right at the feet of your running back and live to play another down. Big mistake. Dylan Morris 
has led one touchdown drive. His team is down two scores. Kamari Pleasant on first down. Good run right up the middle for a gain of eight. Five games that we're excited about tomorrow on the family of networks. Illinois, Penn State in the Big Ten. Cincinnati, Navy, of course, the Bearcats trying to make the college football playoff as a group of five. Oregon, UCLA in the Pac-10. That's where game day will be early tomorrow morning. First down run. Here comes Washington now. Off the turnover, trying to capitalize with the momentum. And if you're Arizona right now, the last thing you want is to give up a big play here, right? You, know, you can withstand maybe a long, slow drive being up by nine points here, but, and again, the one thing this defense has been missing is the takeaway. Is this the time they get that much needed turnover? Redshirt freshman Cameron Davis checking in. We have not called his name yet tonight. He's in the backfield to the left of Morris. Play fake to him. Morris now standing tall in the pocket, taking a shot for Bynum. There's Terrell Bynum. He's got it inside the 10. Boy, if Morris had led him just a little bit more, it might have been six. As it happens, it's a 51-yard strike. Well, right on cue, I said the last thing Arizona can do is give the big play. And what happens? Get a one-on-one -on -one situation. It can just ball a little underthrown there. But a huge play, and now a scoring opportunity for Washington. Of course, Bynum had the touchdown catch earlier in this game for Washington. Now they give it to Davis, and he spins into the end zone for the touchdown. Cameron Davis from nine yards out. And Washington. And you got to love Cameron Davis getting that touchdown here. He's been a little bit maligned. He had the two fumbles, the costly one against... Oregon State a couple weeks ago, but that's just a nice job of reading your blockers downfield and getting north-south and punching it in. Way to respond for Washington. Second touchdown for the Huskies tonight. Quick four-play drive after the interception. Now Arizona now, 15 turnovers this year. They have given up 58 points off of those turnovers. And is that the score that turns this game around for the Huskies? We'll see. They're still down by two. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Ram Trucks. Motor Trend's Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. Huskies backup quarterback Sam Heward, a Washington quarterback legacy. We saw him in the first half. Dad Damon Heward on the left set all kinds of passing records at Washington in the 90s. Then his uncle Brock came along and broke some of those records. Again, we saw Sam, the freshman five-star recruit, in the first half. He had just the one series. It was uneventful after Dylan Morris got hurt. But here's Washington back in this game after the turnover and yeah. uh, turnovers have been so costly for Arizona this year they came into the night a minus nine turnover margin second to last in the country and, and such a costly one there they're moving the ball and you like to think if they just even get a field goal right there this game starts to slip away but get the turnover and then what four plays Washington punches it in that's a way to respond and you got to give credit to Dylan Morris here he's had some bad plays tonight but in crunch time he's put a few good ones together and Washington came in shorthanded tonight. Several guys did not make the trip, including their best tackler, Edafuan Ulafoshio, the linebacker, did not make it. Cameron Williams out. Starting left tackle, Jackson Kirkland, out with an injury. Taimani and Newton also not here. So if Washington can find a way <laughs> to come back and win this game, it show a lot of character for Jimmy Lake's team. Jalen John will run it again. That's his 17th carry tonight. He'll only get a yard this time as Bruner makes the stop. And there's Carson Bruner is filling in for Ulafoshio tonight. The freshman, it's a nice job stopping a first down run. We've seen so much success on first down running the football for Arizona tonight. Also should mention that Alex Cook was carted off the field at the end yep. of the first quarter, he was taken to a local hospital. The early indications are that uh, things are going to be okay as the early reports are good, yep. moving his extremities. 
And we're grateful for that as John gets another tote here. He'll get it to the 30-yard line, still pushing the pile to the 32. So third down coming up here for Arizona as they'd like to sustain another drive. Absolutely. It's a nice stop by my guy Jackson Sermon there. But, yeah, this is a critical here. Put together some nice long drives. But then they've been stopped a few times, and here it is again. They're going to be stopped here. Flag comes in in the backfield. Arizona had converted five times on third down tonight, but we'll see what the flag's about. It's against the Wildcats. Holding offense up 78. Penalties declined. Result of the play is fourth down. So fourth down here, and it's a short fourth and one. Decision time for Jed Fish. Do you punt or do you go for it? I think you go for it right here. You've you got to try to wait to capture some momentum. Looks like they are going to punt it. Mm, the crowd doesn't yeah, like it. I don't know. I think you sense an opportunity there. Again, Jed Fish says, my team is still trying to learn how to win. They're also trying to find some confidence. Yeah, and how many times did he say when we talked to him on the call this week, we can't have penalties, no penalties, and these penalties have come in just the worst times for this team. Austin Dorp, a great punt. Ooh. But a nice move. And Giles Jackson... Gets it across the 20, just short of the 25. Ostendorp with a 55-yard punt, but a decent return for Jackson to avoid getting pinned deep. I can't believe this wasn't a flag right here. And he is well out of bounds when he gets hit. There he steps, boom. And that was Kenny Abair, senior out of New Orleans, a Vanderbilt transfer who laid that lick. So Washington, they've got a tough stretch coming up. If they can get this one tonight, they will go to Stanford next week. Cardinal coming off by. Then they host Oregon and Arizona State at Colorado and finish with Wazoo in the Apple Cup. They don't play USC or Utah this year. It's a tough stretch, but it's a stretch where if they want to put themselves back in this conversation in Pac-12, it's right there for the taking. Replay has stopped the previous play. Reviewing targeting. Yep. Mm. Uh, I, again, I couldn't believe it wasn't called. So Jim Northcott, our replay official, is going to look at this. We'll see if it's a targeting call when we come back. Now Washington down a couple. They've got the football back. There was no targeting, by the way, on Kenny Abair as they looked at it. Made the decision pretty quickly, too. And it looked like it was maybe a late hit about out of bounds, but this that's not reviewable. But Abair is not defenseless right there. He is a runner. Okay, so targeting you know, is not the issue there. Forcible contact to the head or neck area doesn't apply. He didn't use the crown of his helmet, so that's a good no call for targeting. And we'll see what Dylan Morris in this. UW offense is made of, they have scored twice here in the second half after being shut out in the first half. Cameron Davis, who scored the touchdown in the last series, is in the backfield as they go to work from the 17-yard line. Davis backing his way across the 25 and pushed down by Christian Young. That's a gain of nine. Dylan Morris in the first half, and the offense was anemic. In the second half, they've come around. And this is redemption time here for Dylan Morris. Second half, he's played well here. Can he find a way to not make mistakes and make a couple big throws here to get his team the victory? And second down and one. Davis stays in. Redshirt French freshman out of Rancho Cucamonga. He gets it again. And he's got a first down. We saw McGrew and Pleasant exclusively up until the last series. Davis comes in, and he's been a spark for this run game. He really has. And I think for, he was just in the coach's doghouse uh, for those two fumbles early in the year. But uh, I like giving the young man another opportunity here, and he's delivered. And Richard Newton is out tonight. He would be the other run, running back in the Husky stable. But he didn't make the trip. Under nine minutes to go. Washington down a couple. Davis again on first down. Slips a tackle. Tries to spin out of another one. 
and he's down at the 32. Jackson Turner, the rover, comes over to make that tackle. It's good team defense there by Arizona. Guys flying around. Christian Young came, comes up and misses the tackle, but another Wildcat there to pick up the slack. Dylan Morris, 3-1 and one as a starter last year. The clear number one coming out of camp this year. Got the sense the last couple of weeks he was looking over his shoulder. Here's a chance to solidify himself as not only the quarterback of this team, but the leader of this yeah. team. Second and eight. He's going to go deep down the field for Bynum. He's got him. Bynum inside the 20-yard line down to the 17. Biggest play of the night. 51 yards for the Huskies. And so happy for Dylan Morris because, as we've talked about, so many missed throws he's had tonight. But then, I mean, this is an absolute beauty. Over the outside shoulder of the wide receiver, Bynum away from the defender. Perfect play there. Bynum now. 5 catches for 143 yards and a touchdown. Morris looking to the air again, going to the end zone, has a man but it's overthrown. Bynum couldn't haul that one in. Let's go back to that catch. And so many times this year he's underthrown the ball, overthrown it and the ball is just in the perfect spot and then Bynum does the rest. And you got to give Jimmy Lake some credit. You know, a lot of folks, including me, are saying, hey, I mean, is it time to bring Sam Heward in this game? I, th I just think the experience of Dylan Morris has shown through here. If he can continue to play well here in crunch time, it's a good sign. He's got a little bit more of a confident air yeah. about him now here. Away from center. He'll go to Davis. Davis hit at the line and thrust back by Deion Wilson, the freshman defensive tackle out of Paris, California. So many good young players in this defensive line for Arizona. Deion Wilson, the freshman from California. Good looking football player right there. Here we go, crunch time here. Can Dylan Morris deliver? Kate Otten, only two catches tonight. He's at the bottom of the screen. Got Roma Dunze at the top. Morris lofts it to the end zone. Incomplete flag. He wanted Kate Otten. And it looks like it might be pass interference or holding. We'll see. Prior to the pass, holding. Defense number five. Half the distance to the goal. That penalty includes an automatic first down. And, and Christian Young has done such a good job tonight. He's got a, uh, one of the toughest jobs on that defense. He's got to cover tight ends. He's got a blitz. And he just gets the left hand just around the collar there of Kate on slows him down and got the holding and drew the flag. Well, that was going to be his job all night, yeah. you know, containing Kate Otten. And for the most part, he's done a great job. I'd, I'd find Kate Otten again here. This is his area of the field. Just two catches tonight for Otten. Morris off the play fake. A rifle to the end zone touchdown. And Washington surges in front. An eight-yard strike to Roma Dunze, his second touchdown catch of the year. Big target, explosive wide receiver. Look at Dylan Morris, fired up right now. Great job leading this team on his last couple drives. Little play action, has the time, doesn't panic, finds the open guy and hits him. Puts the ball on the money. Those throws where you're not pressured, there's a guy open, you got to put the ball in the numbers, and he did. 21 to 16 as Washington is playing from in front for the first time tonight. Odunze, a touchdown catch last week, the first of his career, gets his second one here tonight, and it's a huge one for the Huskies. Boy, did this game change. For Jed Fish's team, they had a lead in the fourth quarter. 
then Will Plummer through the interception and since then Washington has scored 14 unanswered to take a 21 to 16 lead late now in this ballgame. And it just goes to prove how much of a, a momentum swing can come out of a turnover. It's 16 to 7. They're driving the ball inside the 25 yard line, getting ready to put more points on the board. Get the costly turnover, 14 unanswered. Washington's winning this game. Mm. And then the Washington offense coming alive. Here's the interception, though, and this is where the game really changed. And, and he's done such a good job all night of not putting the ball in harm's way, taking what the defense gives you, and that's a ball where it's covered. Just throw the ball at the feet of the running back and line it up for third down there, and just, again, so backbreaking a turnover in that area of the field has really been the momentum swing. Arizona down five. They only have one touchdown tonight. Their other three scores have come on field goals as Plummer gets hit hard short of the 30. Say it again. They don't have any quarterback depth. They have lost two quarterbacks in the last two weeks. Luke Ashworth and Braden Zermino are the backups now and they're both walk-ons. Yeah, can't have the quarterback taking that many shots like that. They'll hand it off and John is pulled down. At about the 31 as another marker comes in. 88, 10 yards for the previous spot, second down. That's how the tight end Alex Lines, who they're really excited about, but makes a mistake there. And it, Clay, we, we've talked about it, but it's just Arizona just does not know how to close a game, how to win a game. And get the turnover late, some costly penalties, and just really disheartening for this team that has played really, really well tonight. Five of their six losses coming into the night. They've been within a score in the fourth yeah. quarter, including that loss to FCS Northern Arizona. Well, they had the lead in the fourth quarter in this game before seeing it slip away. And now Plummer is sacked at the 13. Latuli Nasanova, who had that interception yeah. in the fourth quarter here, now gets a sack. And that is the second tonight for the Washington defense. And it's third and a mile. Plummer hit. Dumps it off short. And Tavion Cunningham wrapped up. Jalen John actually wrapped up. That's a gain of seven. It'll be fourth down, and Arizona will have to punt with just over five minutes to go. And you like to think if this is even a fourth and five or something, they may go for it. But this area of the field and now being fourth and 15, you're forced to punt the football here. Another booming punt for Austin Dorpy has been excellent tonight. Giles back inside the 20, spins away and gets back to the 20. And he's pulled out of bounds. That's a 60-yard punt for Austin Dorp. And now Washington needs some first downs. They can burn some clock and get this one closer to the finish line. Another reminder, Ohio State and Indiana, our Saturday night game on ABC, 7.30 Eastern time, 4.30 Pacific time. Buckeyes already have a loss to Oregon out of the Pac-12, of course. But, you know, they still have... All their goals in front of them, of course, the Big Ten Championship and the college football playoff. That's right. It's all in front of the IU this week, then number seven Penn State the following week, Purdue coming up, Michigan State, Michigan. It's the schedule's there for them to get back in this thing. But right now, Arizona's defense has got to find a way to attack. You cannot allow a long, slow drive here by Washington. This is McGrew. Good run on first down. Exactly what the Huskies yep. need to do. They averaged just over two yards per play Rocky in the first half 10 yards per play here in the second half and they've kind of hung with the run here and you're right in the second half especially the fourth quarter have been able to get some key runs here and there we've talked about Cameron Davis being involved in the run game in the second half that's that's what Jimmy Lake wants uh, Jimmy Lake, when we talked to him, still very optimistic. Young head coach Upbeat, yeah. says the effort is there from the guys. The goal of the Pac-12 title is also still attainable. 
Trying to finish a come from behind here tonight. In the desert as McGrew gets the first down. And this is a positive thing right now for Washington's offensive line. They've not been able to run the ball well, but this is the time. Four-minute offense trying to close that game out, and I'm seeing some surge by those big guys up front. Arizona had to burn a timeout. Remember, it was a defensive timeout that Don Brown had to call because something wasn't right yeah. with their setup, their scheme, and they burned that early in the third quarter, so they only have two remaining. Three and a half to go. There's McGrew picking his way. Stood up at the 35. Washington needs to win four of its last six to get Boyle eligible and to avoid its first losing season since 2009. That's when they went five and seven, five and seven under Sark. And uh, you know, this this was not pretty here tonight, but if they can get out of here with a victory. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter if it's pretty. They need to stop the bleeding here. Two straight losses, and they can close this thing out. They are starting the second half of the season out on the right foot. Get a chance to regroup, prepare for Stanford next week. And pitch it out. And coming to the near side is Davis. And a timeout called by Arizona with 2.31 to go. Davis has been good here in the second half. He's been a key to this comeback for Washington. Really has. And it all turned on that interception thrown by Will Plummer. The only turnover for Arizona tonight, but it was huge. Yeah, it was a costly one. It really was. It's just I mean, they're driving. The worst they're going to get is a field goal out there inside the 30-yard line. It just totally swung the momentum. Washington started running the ball well. Dylan Morris made a couple key throws on that drive, including the touchdown pass. And, and then all of a sudden, that Washington defense came alive when it needed to. I'll tell you what, right now, this is the play of the game for Arizona's defense. They don't stop them here. This game eeks away. Only one timeout left. they got to sell out, bring everything to try to stop this. I imagine it's going to be a run here. And late getting a guy on the field. They need three yards. Can they get it? Morris got it to Otten, but he's tackled immediately. Two penalty flags down, and Arizona may have too many men on the field again. This is not going to make Don Brown Legal happy. participation on the defense, 12 that's... during the play. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Oh, Please put two minutes record. and 26 seconds on the game clock, 2.26. Absolutely inexplicable how in the most important defensive play of the game, you don't have the right personnel on the field. He's running on late Tatum, late onto the field. You have to imagine it was a package and a personnel grouping. And he's supposed to be on the field. He's standing on the sideline and just, and, and you see Jed Fish is just saying, my God, how did we let this thing slip away like this? Ugh. That is the 10th penalty tonight against the Wildcats. And it's been two times in a critical down. They haven't had the right guys right. on the field or too many guys. I just. And the main reason Arizona had the lead at the half was because of the defense. They're going to adjust the clock. But the Arizona defense here in a critical juncture Screws yeah, up. Just, they, they really have. And they're going to get the ball back with a you know, good solid two minutes left on the clock with a timeout. And, and, and now Washington really in the driver's seat here. They're going to run this ball, force Arizona to use their final timeout and get this thing down well close to zeros. The clock starts running again. First and 10 from the 43. Morris to McGrew straight ahead. And there's the timeout, and now the Wildcats are out. 
No timeouts left for Arizona, and that losing streak now appears to be ready to go to 19 games. And it's one thing, look, if the other team beats you, their guy makes a play on your guy, and maybe you're just not athletic enough, or, but it's another thing to, because of a personnel issue and not being on the field in the most critical moment of the game, that be one of the differences and not give your football team an opportunity to win. It's just, I mean, just absolutely maddening for Jed Fish, Don Brown, and that entire crew over there. Five games tomorrow on the Family of Networks. We haven't talked about Clemson and number 23 Pittsburgh yet. Uh, you know, I've been impressed with Kenny Pickett yeah, how about and the that? Pitt Panthers. They're Kenny one of the Pickett better has teams been around in the for ACC. about seven years, hasn't he? Yeah, <laughs> something like time. that. He's been around. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of guys like that in college That's football right, this, this year. year. He's playing well. So enjoy your college football Saturday. It starts with game day from L.A. bright and early from the UCLA campus. McGrew hitting the backfield, and here we go, third down. As Mo Diallo makes another play, and that is the ninth tackle for loss, the Arizona D. And Dylan Morris can be able to get this clock down to about just over a minute here. Imagine he'll snap this ball with about three, two, three seconds left on the play clock. Runs it right down. And well short of the line to gain as Diallo is there again. Fourth down. So They're going to punt yeah. with about 27 yep. seconds left. And so Arizona is going to have a puncher's chance with Will Plummer at the controls. And of course, no timeouts remain. Right. And as we talked about, critical having to burn one early in the half there, and then they had to waste the two to try to stop the clock to give them a chance. But yeah, the, we'll have about 25 or so seconds here. Now, if Washington can get this to the finish line with the win, is this going to quiet the critics in Seattle? I, I think it will a little bit. I mean, well, you know, it, it certainly wasn't the, <laughs> the prettiest game in no. the world, but, uh, you know, a win is a win. Jimmy Lake. Head coach Dylan Morris, his quarterback that he, he has put all his trust in. Dylan Morris came alive in the second half for sure, getting this team in front. And just really happy to see Dylan Morris answer. I mean, you know, made so many bad plays tonight and some off throws here, but in crunch time in the second half when he needed to, he has been picture perfect. Some absolute lasers he's thrown. So coming out onto the field is Race Porter. He had a punt blocked in the first half. Don't forget about that. It led to the first points of the football game, a field goal for Arizona. Isaiah Taylor blocked it. Yeah, he and came, it kind of set yeah. the momentum early for Arizona. So yeah. watch for that here. Yeah, and it came off the punt team's right side is where Taylor came for the block. They're going to bring the house. Nobody back deep for Arizona, but Porter was able to get it away. It's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. 54-yard punt. So with 21 seconds left, Arizona has it, but they're out of timeouts. And they need a touchdown. So this is where you're digging deep into that playbook here. You have to imagine lots of throws to the outside part of the field. Washington's defense knows that. You know, obviously, in college, you know, the middle of the field is open, you, you know, with the clock stopping to move the sticks. Will Plummer runs out onto the field, the third quarterback this year to work a game for Arizona. Gunner Cruz out for the year, Jordan McLeod out for the season. And we've got ZTF of rushing off the offense's left side. Castile is going to get to the marker, the boundary, I should say. Radley Hiles with the stop. The clock stops with 16 seconds to go. And right here is where you need a big chunk yardage play to give yourself a shot. And, and obviously you, you see Washington's defense playing back here, not letting anything get behind them, can't have it. 
Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Plummer standing tall in the pocket. Throws it deep, and nobody home. And there's a marker. There is a penalty marker down. Personal foul and late hit. Foul. Yeah. Roughing the passer deep. Wow. Number eight. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Redshirt freshman Braylon Trice with an inexcusable penalty in this situation. You just can't have it. Like, like why? why? Why throw him late right there? Yeah, I'm going to put a few seconds back on the clock, too. So you put it at the 40. I mean, 15 seconds, that's another. Two plays you can run right there at least. Plummer quickly. Oh, oh. it's dropped by Castile. Should have been caught. And so now six seconds to go from the 40-yard line. And so this is it. It's going to have to be a Hail Mary situation. They've got some tall receivers. Booby Curry, who hasn't been involved in the offense much tonight. He's 6'2". Jalen Joyner, or Jalen Johnson, I should say. Jamari Joyner, 6-1. Everybody back, just a three-man rush. Another quick outside pass to Castile. Two drops in a row, two seconds left. And that is Arizona's season in a nutshell. Right there, yeah. Two opportunities, you can maybe get a combined 10 yards, give yourself a shot with a final play. Losing streak, 18 games. And there are a lot of growing pains right now in this Arizona program. We've seen yeah. some of the reasons why here tonight. 14 unanswered points here in the fourth quarter for Washington. Last play of the game, Plummer. Hail Mary pass down the middle of the field. It's underthrown and intercepted. And that's going to do it. Picked off by Asa Turner, his second interception of the year. That's the ball game as Washington avoids what would have been an embarrassing defeat here in Tucson tonight. Come back to win it 21 to 16. And, and you got to give Washington credit. A poor first half of football. Arizona had all the momentum, but they set the tone. The first drive of the second half. Defense gets a three and out, get the ball back to their offense, and then just made some plays down the stretch. I got to say it again, Clay. I got to be, you got to give Dylan Morris a lot of credit here. You know, had a lot of adversity, a lot of people calling for him to not be the guy, and he delivered in crunch time. Very, very happy for that young man. Washington evens its Pac-12 record at 2-2. Two and two. They're now 3-4 and four overall. They're going to go to Stanford next week to face the Cardinal, who will be coming off by. Dylan Morris, 13 of 21, 217 yards passing, most of those in the second half. And, of course, the two big touchdowns. As Washington's able to pull this one out in the desert, tonight as we go down to Tiffin. Dylan, you helped to lead this team to 14 unanswered points in the fourth quarter. What does it feel like to get a win like this where your team had to had to gut it out to come back? Yeah, I mean, it's a great team win. It just shows the resilience we have on this team. You know, at halftime, halftime we were down, and, I mean, we just had to talk and just do our thing. We just had to go back to the basics, just execute our fundamentals. Um, and I think that's what we did in the second half, to show there was some great resilience. You got briefly knocked out of the game with that bloody nose, yeah. but you come back. You have over 200 <laughs> yards, two touchdown passes, and a really strong second half. What does that type of performance do for you now as you move forward? Yeah, I mean, it just gives a little, you get a little confidence leading into the next week. Um, and it, I think that really shows just the type of playmakers I have outside. And I can put my, my trust into those guys and throw the ball up. You saw them making some great catches and great plays. Um, so definitely rolling in next week. Got some extra confidence. Congratulations. Thank Thanks, you. Dylan. Didn't come easy for no. Washington tonight, but they get <laughs> out of here with a win. Yeah, absolutely. A good win. Uh, not a pretty win, but a good win. And as we talked about, they got Oregon coming up, Arizona State coming up, Washington State. So if they can find a way to build off this win, and for Dylan Morris especially to build off this, who knows what can happen. A lot of injuries, too, for this Washington team. Hopefully they can get healthy. We wish the best for Alex Cook, too, who was carted off in the first half. There you see the numbers for Dylan Morris. For Arizona, the nation's longest losing streak 
goes to 19 games. They'll try again to end the drought next Saturday as they go to USC. A come from behind victory, 21 to 16 for Washington, for Tiffany Blackman, for Rocky Boyman, for our entire crew. I'm Clay Matfix saying so long from Tucson as Jimmy Lake and the Huskies get the win on the road.